Hello, everyone. Welcome to MCQ discussion series with me, Sanjay Dekhil. And the topic for, for discussion today is cephalosporins and related antibiotics. So let us start right away. The first generation cephalosporins like cephazoline and cephalexin are very active against atypical organisms, gram positive organisms, anaerobic organisms, or gram negative cocci. So, which one is it? We are talking about the first generation cephalosporins, right? Cephazoline and cephalexin. And this type of both of these drugs, they are active against gram positive cocci. Right? So, the first generation cephalosporins like cephazoline, cephatroxyl, cephalexin, cephalotin, cephapyrine, cephradine. They are very active against gram-positive cocci, such as streptococci and staphylococci, including the methicillin-sensitive staphylococcus aureus. New generation drugs have activity against MRSA, like ceftriolin, the fifth generation drug. So if it is MSSA, you can use the, gram, the first generation agents, and if it is MRSA, then we need the fifth generation agents or anti-MRSA agents, like ceftriolin. Okay, so you are a treating physician and encounter a case of pneumococcal meningitis. You intend using cephalosporin for the treatment. Which drug would you prefer from, the, from among the ones listed below? So here we are talking about a case of pneumococcal meningitis, right? The options are cephalexin, cefotaxin, cefachlor, and cefazolin. When it comes to the treatment of meningitis, you, you need an antibiotic that has got very good penetration into the CSF or cerebrospinal fluid. Right? And it is said that the first and second generation agents, they generally have poor CSF penetration. Therefore, you'll need an agent that is of third generation. Right? So the agent out here is cefotaxim. So the first and second generation cephalosporins, they have poor penetration into CNS and therefore are not indicated for the treatment of meningitis. The third generation agent, cefotaxin, enters the CNS and is active against most bacteria causing meningitis. Cephoperazone, though belongs to the third generation cephalosporin, it does not penetrate the CNS. Okay, a 50-year-old neutropenic male patient was febrile for two days. The infective organism was identified as Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Which of the following drugs is useful for the treatment of the patient? Ceftriaxone, ceftazidine, sednidir, cefotaxime. Here we are talking about a neutropenic male patient, right? A febrile neutropenic patient and the region for infection was identified as Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So we need an agent that is active against Pseudomonas aeruginosa. The agent out here is ceftazidim. So ceftazidim is the only third generation cephalosporin which has got activity against Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Uh, Pseudomonas infection can be treated by combination of anti-pseudomonal beta-lactam and an aminoglycoside, carbapenem with anti-pseudomonal quinolones, with conjunction with aminoglycoside. However, in cases of febrile patients with neutropenia, monotherapy with ceftazidim or carbapenem is used. So if we had a carbapenem that is imipenem or meropenem out here, that would also be an option. But in absence of it, ceftazidim is the option out here as a single drug. Cephalosporins normally require dose modification in cases of renal failure. However, one of the drugs from the group does not require dose adjustment in case of renal failure. Identify the drug. Ceftriaxone, cefoxetine, ceftriolin, cephalexin. So, so you understand from the question itself that Cephalosporins normally require dose adjustment in case of renal failure, right? So most of the cephalosporin drugs, they require dose adjustment. However, some drugs, they do not require doses adjustment in renal failure. So the drug out here is ceftriaxone. And the doses of cephalosporin drugs should be decreased in case of renal failure, depending on the creatinine clearance of the drug. However, the third generation agent, ceftriaxone, may not require doses adjustment in case of renal failure. Ceftriaxone ex excretion is mainly through the biliary tract, 
and therefore no dosage adjustment is necessary in case of renal insufficiency as well. Let us look at the next question. The question says, internal bacterial species infections are particularly problem problematic because these pathogens can harbor chromosomally encoded AMP C type beta lactamases, which confer resistance to most beta lactamase inhibitors and can develop resistance during therapy through enzyme induction and stable depression. Uh, internal bacterial species caused bacteremia is therefore difficult to treat and has relatively high mortality rates. Which of the following drugs would you prefer for the treatment of internal bacter bacteremia? Is it cefepime, ceftriaxone, ceftazidine, ceftirolin? Okay, if you identify, if you try and identify the drugs that have been given as options, right? You can see that ceftriaxone and ceftazidine; these are the third-generation antibiotics, right? Cefepime is the fourth-generation one, and ceftriaxone is the anti-MRSA cephalosporin, or often it is called fifth-generation antibiotic out here. So, in order to use the, in order to combat the Enterobacter bacteremia. The antibiotic that would be necessary is cefepime. Let us look into the explanation. Cefepime is the only available fourth generation cephalosporin. It is more resistant to hydrolysis by chromosomal beta lactamases, like those produced by Enterobacter. Cefepime is a poor inducer and relatively it is more uh, stable to AMP C beta lactamase. Moreover, because of its zeta ionic structure, cefepime. It rapidly passes through bacterial cell membranes, uh, thereby enhancing the ability to assess its target enzyme. The surveillance data suggests that 80 to 90 percent of enterobacter species bloodstream infections are susceptible to cefepime. Out here, there is a term called zeta ion. Zeta ion is the structure where positive and negative ions are present in the same structure, and this helps the drug cefepime to rapidly enter the bacterial cell membrane. Let's move on to the next question. Identify the third generation cephalosporin used as empiric therapy in community acquired upper respiratory tract infections for home-based treatment. So the options are ceftriaxone, cefopirazone, ceftazidine, cefpodoxim. So here, the cues are third generation cephalosporin, right? And upper respiratory tract infection, and then home based treatment, right? So, if it is a home based treatment, then you are not going to give injectable drugs. Ceftriaxone and ceftazidine, they are injectable drugs, right? So, you need a third generation agent that, can, that is useful in upper respiratory tract infection and that can be used at home. So, the answer out here is cefpodoxim. So cefpodoxim is a third generation cephalosporin. It is appropriate choice for treating community acquired respiratory tract infections because of broad spectrum of antibacterial activity and favorable pharmacokinetic profile that allows choice daily administration of the drug. Uh, cefpodoxim exhibits a superiorly balanced spectrum of activity against principal bacterial pathogens that are responsible for outpatient respiratory tract and other infections when compared with other widely used oral cephalosporins or amoxicillin. Third generation cephalosporins are not a safe bait when it comes to the treatment of infections caused by certain agents which are capable of producing cephalosporinase. Which of the following organisms may escape the effects of third generation cephalosporins? Haemophilus, Iscaria, uh, Neisseria, and Acinetobacter. Here we are talking about an, uh, an organism that is able of producing cephalosporinase and thereby they, are, they become resistant to third generation cephalosporins. So the answer out here is Acinetobacter. Seracea, Provincia, Providencia, Acinetobacter, and Citrobacter, they are capable of producing chromosomally encoded cephalosporinase that Constitutive, when constitutively is expressed, confer resistance to third generation cephalosporins. But again, third generation cephalosporins, they are able to work against Providencia and Citrobacter like drug, like organisms, if they do not express cephalosporinase.
Which of the following is first generation parenteral cephalosporin useful as prophylactic therapy in various surgeries? Cefiroxin, cefazolin, cefadroxin, cefalexin. So here we are talking about a drug from first generation, right? It is the parenteral one. And again, it is useful as prophylactic therapy in various surgeries. So the answer out here is cefazolin, the first generation as in. Cefazolin is the first generation parenteral cephalosporin that is useful as prophylactic therapy in various surgeries. Cefadroxyl and cephalexin, they are first generation agents but are only available in oral forms. And cefiroxin is useful in some prophylactic therapy in some surgeries. However, it belongs to second generation cephalosporin. Okay, the strategies to reduce the spread of antibiotic resistance include greater use of broad spectrum agents, de escalation and restrictive antibiotic policies, promotion of hand washing and basic, hy basic hygiene measures, contact isolation and screening. So, here we are talking about reducing the spread of antibiotic resistance, right? So, it would be the strategy would be de escalation and restrictive antibiotic policies. The greater use of broad spectrum essence would lead to antibiotic resistance. Similarly, promotion of hand washing and basic hand hygiene measures, also the contact, uh, contact isolation and tracing, these are used for preventing the spread of infections. Let us move to the next question. Which of the following is a cephalosporin beta-lactamase inhibitor approved for the treatment of complicated infections caused by ESBL producing enterobacter agents? Ceftralazone, Thazobactam, Ceftralozan, Avibactam, Ceftazidim, Solbactam, Ceftazidim, Tazobactam. So here we are talking about Cephalosporin beta lactamase inhibitor, right? And it is approved for treatment of complicated infections caused by ESPL producing enterobacter agents. The answer out here is ceftralozan tazobactam. Ceftralozan tazobactam and ceftazidib avibactam, they are both FDA approved for the treatment of complicated intra abdominal infections and urinary tract infections. Both the agents have potent in vitro activity against gram-native organisms, including Pseudomonas arizonosa and AMPC and extended beta-lactamase producing enterobacteriaceae. Neither of the agents are active against organisms producing metallo-beta-lactamases. Ceftazidim avipactam may be an option for carbapenemase producing organisms as well. The third generation cephalosporins are used to treat a wide variety of serious infections caused by organisms that are resistant to most drugs. This should be avo avoided in patients in treatment of data dust infections, even in the, if the clinical isolate appears to be susceptible in vitro owing to the emergence of resistance. So here we are talking about a certain organism which should be avoided the treatment of, of, uh, in the treatment of which third generation of drugs should not be used. Right? And even if they are susceptible in vitro, the chances of emergence of resistance is relatively high. There isn't out here. Options out here is Enterobacter, Hemophilus, Neisseria, and Pneumococci. Third generation agents, they are generally useful against Hemophilus, Neisseria, right? But then this should not be used against Enterobacter. Enterobacter infections are not treated with third generation cephalosporins owing to chances of emergence of resistance. So, fourth generation agents are rather preferred for enterobacter infections. The first generation cephalosporins have good coverage against Acinetobacter, Pseudomonas arizonosa, Klebsiella pneumonia, Citrobacter. Klebsiella pneumonia, normally, if they have not developed resistance, then they, they can be treated by first generation cephalosporins. However, the, they have been increasingly becoming resistant to various agents, right? So, Klebsiella pneumonia is one of the most notorious pathogens in developing resistance 
they it falls under the escape pathogens as well so it may require the treatment with newer generation drugs however if the resistance has not been developed by the by the organism then it can still be treated by the first generation patients like e coli klebsiella pneumonia proteus mirabilis they are often sub sensitive to first generation cephalosporins Vancomycin remains first line therapy for severe MRSA infections. However, clinical fail failures, poor tolerance, and elevated minimum inhibitory concentrations with vancomycin are a concern, especially in severe infections with prolonged treatment courses. A cephalosporin drug is increasingly being used for the treatment of acute skin and skin structure infections caused by MRSA. Identify the drug ceftazidime, ceftaroline, ceftriaxone, ceftriaxone cefepime. Ceftazidime and ceftriaxone are the third generation cephalosporins. Cefepime is the fourth generation one. And ceftaroline out here is the anti MRSA cephalosporin or the fifth generation cephalosporin. So the answer out here is ceftaroline. Ceftaroline is intravenous bactericidal cephalosporin approved by the USA FDA in 2010 for MRSA infections. Cephal uh, ceftaroline has increased binding to penicillin binding protein 2E, which mediates methicillin resistance in staphylococci. So there is bactericidal activity against these strains. Ceft ceftaroline is currently approved for the treatment of skin and soft tissue infections and community acquired pneumonia. And another cephalosporin drug for treatment of MRSA infections have also come, which is ceftobipyrol. Mm. Okay, you encounter a case of community acquired pneumonia in a 48 year old patient attending your OPD clinic. You think of empirically prescribing him a cephalosporin drug with activity against beta lactamase producing as influenza and also many pneumococci. Which drug do you prescribe from among the ones listed below? Ceftriaxone, cephalaxin, cefiroxime, cefazoline. Okay, so the empiric, for the empiric treatment of community acquired pneumonia, right? Uh, we will be using cefiroxime. Cefiroxime is the oral second generation cephalosporin that is active against beta lactamase producing hemophilus influenzae. And cefiroxime can be used to treat community acquired pneumonia in OPD settings. A 32 year old woman comes to your clinic and you identify it as a case of pelvic inflammatory disease. Which of the below given drugs would be useful for the purpose of treatment at home? Cefraxone, cefoxetin, cefazoline, cefalexan. So here we are talking about pelvic inflammatory disease and treatment at home, right? Ceftriaxone is an injectable antibiotic, right? Cefoxetin is pretty much useful in treatment of pelvic inflammatory disease and home-based treatment basically. Cefoxetin and cefotitan are structurally related cefamycin drugs that belong to second generation cephalosporins. They have got activity against anaerobes and hence can be used in the treatment of mixed anaerobic infections like pelvic inflammatory disease and peritonitis. The first generation agents cephalexin and cefazoline are ineffective for the purpose. Ceftriaxone is injectable cephalosporin from third generation and is not suitable for treatment at home. Okay, thank you everyone for listening to the MCQ discussions. I believe it was useful to you guys. If you think it was useful, do try listening to other, other MCQ discussion series as well. Thank you. That's all for today. Have a nice day.